Hello, and welcome to today's author chat. I'm Nikki Woods, and I am extremely pleased to be talking uh, to Randria Houston. She is considered one of the nation's leading experts on management and leadership. She is also a nonprofit consultant and president of RLH Coaching and Consulting, uh, which is a firm that focuses on nonprofit strategy development for visionary women leaders. But she is also an author. Uh, and I want to talk to her about her memoir, I Almost Gave Up, Finding Faith in the Rubble of Brokenness. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Nikki. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Good. You, you know, and I normally I won't read anything verbatim necessarily, but I was really um, moved by part of your synopsis. Um, and I think a lot of women um, may, you know, recognize themselves in you. You said that um, you were dealing with the ridicule of being a single young mother um, and you wanted to clear the misconceptions of your character through extensive educational achievements. And in the midst of obtaining your credentials, you found yourself lost in the arms of lovers, flipping through, flipping through the cracks of your Christian foundation and facing a psychological breakdown as you fought to recover from it all. And I just was really taken with that because I think a lot of women, in order to cover our brokenness, we do become overachievers. Um, is that what you discovered through writing this book? Absolutely. I found myself uh, going after credential after credential, you know, bachelor's degree, master's degree, um, in all different areas and interests. And one day I just had to take a look at myself and say, why am I doing this? Um, And I saw something interesting, I think, on Facebook one time that said, who would you be without your credentials? And that was Mm -hmm. like a slap in the face for me. And then that's when I had to evaluate my journey and really say, what is the education all about? And I discovered that it was a mask. and a defense mechanism against the stereotypes of being not only a single mother but a teen mother. So take me, so take me back. Where, where do you think um, you kind of started to stray? Um, what was what was the the I guess the I don't know what you said, but what what was the the shift in your mindset where you knew you were going down the wrong path? Initially, before uh, the pregnancy. Mhm. Yeah. Um I was in high school. I actually walked across uh the stage 6 months pregnant and I went to prom 6 months pregnant. Um and looking back, I was a varsity cheerleader. Uh I dated the head quarterback. You know, I was who everybody wanted to be. And um that relationship ended and then I kind of just found myself uh, trying to find love from somewhere, and that's when I ended up with my daughter's father um, and made some bad decisions, and there I was. Uh, I remember cheering at the Army Bowl. It was like in a, a February after football season and finding out that I was two months pregnant, and it was absolutely devastating. Uh, to walk around high school and everybody knows you're pregnant and it's not by the person that you were initially with all these years. So it was really a traumatic experience for me. And so when 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 did you start to heal from that? Was it after you figured out when you saw the post on Facebook and you were like, okay, I'm doing all of this because I'm still broken from, you know, being a teen mom and a pregnant teen mom um, or a pregnant teenager walking across the stage and going to prom before becoming a teen mom. When did you discover that that you really were just still broken? I think the change happened um, as as I got older. I was in graduate school and I was uh, accepted into this uh, single moms program where they house single moms and you got different uh, financial help, um, goal setting, um, and they helped you along your educational journey. And I was in a relationship at the time that I talk about in the book, 
that was very toxic. We were madly in love with each other, but we just brought out the worst in each other. And I ended up sitting in front of a psychiatrist um, because we got therapy included in the program. And I ended up telling the psychiatrist, I said, look, one of us is going to have to die. One of us is going to kill each other if we keep going the way that we're going. And it's all his fault. And the psychiatrist said to me, well, what is your role in all of this? And that was a turning point for me where I really had to sit and reflect about the choices that I had made and um, my role in the devastation of the relationship. And so that was kind of a turning point for me, just sitting down and having that conversation and her saying, well, let's not talk about him, let's talk about you. Mm. I know one of the things that you you stress not only in you know your social media postings and all of that, but also in the book, is that this this notion of healing is it's an ongoing process. I mean, we never quite um, complete <laughs> that whole yeah. thing. And so, what do you say to people when they when they think that you know at one point it's just going to end? What do you say to people about continuous growth? Oh, man, I say keep living, keep learning, and keep growing because um, we don't realize the pain uh, that continues to grow with us, and we're very good at hiding it, especially as women. And so we put these masks of education and accomplishment on, and it's not until you're back in that same situation with someone else that you realize, oh, my God, I still haven't healed from that last time. And, um, you know, that pain shows up in different ways um, and in different relationships, and it also shows up in business. And that, that was another turning point for me, realizing that the insecurities and the fears that I had and even the mindset that I had transitioned from my personal life uh, to my business. And and I think that's an interesting thing because we're always talking about like the mindset of success and you attract what you, you, how you feel about yourself, not necessarily how others feel about you, but you kind of succeed um, at the level of your growth. Um, So what do you say to, especially, I guess, teen, teen women and those who may be pregnant or already teen moms, what do you say to them about success? I say take the time to heal early. Um, I was very lucky. I had a very supportive family. Um, Really, a lot of the negativity came from people outside of my family. Um, And I believe that I rushed going back to school because I wanted to prove people wrong. So when my daughter, I think, was three months, I, I started my first semester in college just because, you know, I wanted people to know I haven't given up and it's not over for me. And, you know, thinking back, I wish I had taken a little bit more time to heal in the beginning because that hurt, that fear, that insecurity, it has stayed with me for a long time before I really dealt with it. And I brought it into many different relationships and even business relationships, um, not knowing that it was still there. So um, to teen moms, I would say take that time to heal. What what was this process like for you writing the book? I, mean, I always tell people books heal us first, and then we then they have the power to heal others. What was the process for you when you decided you were going to write this book? It has been a two- or three-year journey, honestly. My book started from journals that I started to keep when I was in that young mother's program. Um, And the psychiatrist gave the recommendation, well, maybe you should start journaling, you know, about some of the things that you dealt with and some of the experiences you had and um, some of the memories that you're experiencing. And so that's where my book really started. But it was so painful for me to write um, about some of the things in the book and even Uh, go back and just be in that emotional moment of some of the moments in the book. Um, So it took me a really long time to finally just write it because I did not want to go back to those dark emotional places. 
So it was very therapeutic writing the book, extremely therapeutic. But also we know that, you know, therapy is tough and therapy is work. And so um, when I started writing, I had to deal with some of those issues that I hadn't before. What were the conversations that you had to have with others? Um, and not necessarily um, in a bad way, but, um, you know, your family, your friends. I mean, eventually this is a conversation that you'll have to have with your daughter. Um, yeah. What were those like for you? I mean, my daughter, uh, you know, she's been here through the majority of it. The first relationship that I write about, she was three at the time. Um, and so she kind of grew up with me, and she grew up in these relationships. So a lot of stuff she remembers. Um, but for the men that I write about in the book, I did have conversations with them about, look, I'm writing a book and this is what it's going to be about. And even sent them what I wrote and said, you know, I hope you're okay with this, but this is the truth. Um, and so it was, it was really hard, you know, because you have to put yourself in a vulnerable, vulnerable place in a place of ownership of what you've allowed in your life and what you've allowed others to do in your life. Um, But it has been a journey of forgiveness um, and I think reconciliation from uh, the people in the book. That's interesting. The the title of the book is I Almost Gave Up Finding Faith in the Rubble of Brokenness, and the website is unleashyourmovement.com. Tell me a little bit about the spirit behind unleashyourmovement.com. Uh, I created Unleash Your Movement for women who may have uh, come to a place in their lives where they really wanted to do something big, they really wanted to impact the world um, in their own unique way, but couldn't figure out how to do it. Um, And originally when I started my nonprofit in Ghana, you know, there were people who said, you're crazy for even going to Africa. How could you go to Africa? They guilted me as a mother for leaving my daughter for two weeks to go and see the world. Um, And so I started uh, Unleash Your Movement to give women permission. Like, it's okay to pursue whatever it is that you want to do. If you're, It doesn't matter if you're a mother mother. Um, There's still a story to tell. And my motto is every woman has a movement inside of her. And I truly believe that. I love that. I love that. The book is I Almost Gave Up Finding Faith in the Rubble of Brokenness, Randria L. Houston. You can find her on social media, Facebook and Twitter under Randria L. Houston or Instagram under Unleash Your Movement. And the website is UnleashYourMovement.com. Thank you so much for talking with us during author chat. Thank you, Nikki.